But when I was a child, I want to make a billion dollars. And uh, when I grew up today, I want to change a billion lives. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. It's my incredible honor to speak here today. Growing up without much wasn't easy. You know, and uh, we didn't have much money, we didn't have food on the table, there wasn't much stability, but all there was was family love, and the happiness that we got from that love. My mother struggled for as long as I could remember. She took on odd jobs and she, works, she worked as a janitor in a local education centre so we could get free education. She knew education was the only way we could break free from the poverty cycle. She knew education was the only way we could get some form of stability. And she knew she wanted much, much better for us. Even though with limited means, we were taught of the importance of giving back. And this became part of the family's DNA. We were taught to give, to share, to sacrifice, which is merely giving. We were taught since young to put a smile on faces of less fortunate ones. And this gave us internal happiness. And as we proceed, you know, as life as, as it went by, my mother used to tell me that do not give when you have enough or you have extra. Do not give when you don't want something anymore or you don't need it anymore. That is just recycling. Giving is a form of sacrificing something. Uh, this is how I started work in some of the rural isolated villages in Malaysia. For this is how I met Mira. A beautiful six-year-old kid with the most beautiful smile. I visited her village. Mira was constantly suffering from diarrhea due to drinking contaminated water. The same water that was used to bathe, to clean, to cook and to drink as they had no piped water. I built the system for, uh, within six months and I rushed back to Mira. But I was too late. Mira's death resulted in the birth of Saura Industries, a social enterprise. Saura means sun in Sanskrit, symbolizes the light that we hope to bring to every home that faces a similar problem. We know that every step of effort that we make brings many drops of water that could save lives. The system that we prototyped uses solar to purify water and also generates electricity. It's quite a big system. We started off a year and a half ago. And the vision of the company, if you ask any companies out there, you can go on the street and you ask, you can ask your parents, what's the vision of your company? Nobody remembers. But the vision of our company is really simple, which is touching and uplifting lives to technology. And we ventured into the water business. We, although we are a 30 million, a population of 30 million, but one third of the country don't have access to drinking water. One hour away from KL, there's already 180 families in a village that don't have drinking water. And someone told me the other day, there's an Orang Asli village five minutes away from Curve that doesn't have electricity and water. And it really shocked me. So this is the percentage of population that lives under a dollar a day. As you can see, more than 50% of the world can't afford water. And eventually, this has become a commodity in the long run. So we, in the next, in the past one and a half years, we have done quite a huge data household survey. And we did a survey for 2,000 people. And we knew that these people wanted a system which is easy to use, robust, not connected with grid and pipe work, and also has to be really, really cheap. Because most of the systems out there are really bulky, it's really expensive. If you ask 
a company which does rural water purification, they will tell you their system is really cheap in the start. But actually, what the heavy cost lies on is the filter cartridge. So they sell you a system that is cheap up front, and they will send, tell you that every six months you have to change. So that's how they make money. So this was the first prototype that was designed in Indi Subang, in the mechanical engineering lab. Uh, along, along, while building this for six months, I went to the president, Ms. Ling Ling, who was seated in front, who was very kind to me and said, hey, you know, I, I told her I need to use the lab extra time, and I needed someone from a different department to help me because I want to build a prototype, but it has to look good as well. If it's going to be ugly looking, then even the villagers won't use it because they have taste as well. <laughs> and uh, so we designed this system and we showcased this system uh, to the Prime Minister in uh, March 2015 when President Obama was down as well. So we had like uh, 10 minutes uh, leeway time with the President of the United States and also so after 10 minutes of filtering water because this was built out of Uhu glue and after 10 minutes, we were carrying the whole system to the water, to the toilet, because the system was about to hold, the whole system was about to break apart. And uh, so this was the system that we first built. And uh, I sold my iPad to build the system, so it was a really interesting journey. Uh, at the moment, we have, I'm proud to say, we have, for the past one year, so we are a really young startup, a social enterprise. So as, at the moment, we have powered up up to 500 families. Now uh, we have done. Uh, water and electricity. Thank you. So we have done water and electricity up to eleven villages, uh, villages where for the for the past ten years no one there's no cars that it has even entered. Uh, uh, my staff there knows we just we just have uh, we just bought a brand new like four by four four months ago and now it looks like a ten year old pickup truck. Uh, so these are the we have travelled to the rural villages of Kapit. Eight hours by boat, and then four hours by four-wheel drive, and then another four hours by boat. Uh, and then in, in Sarawak, you can see crocodiles uh, sunbathing, you know, throughout the river. So it's quite a very interesting journey. And uh, the villages that we light, it, light up, see some of these villages, they weave. Their main income is weaving. They weave uh, these shawls and uh, really, uh, you know, intricate designed shawls. And uh, we gave them light and they were really thankful to us because now they could weave at night. And it immediately doubled their income. So giving light is one thing, but being able to make sure that they earn out of it and be able to break free from poverty, that's a different thing. We have people telling us that children, telling us that they could read at night because they had light. You know, so that's, we have parents sending us pictures and saying, thank you very much, because now my child can study at night because there's a one light bulb and you have like five children surrounding them and reading. So that's a really powerful statement to the work that we do. And we have done many more villages. Uh, we got, uh, we are moving really fast now. Uh, we, we did a project in Pekan. We did the project in, uh, in Peninsula. If you know, uh, Pekan is the Prime Minister's constituency. Uh, but, uh, you know, and, uh, we, have, we have done quite a bit. And uh, we have grown quite fast as well for the past one year. Uh, we are building a small manufacturing plant in Srawa as well. Uh, the, if you see the systems are really huge, uh, these are the systems that we built. And the system that we are launching next year, after two years of R&D, is in my pocket. So this is the size of the system that can purify 60,000 litres at a price point of 400 ringgit. Uh, we will be launching this... We'll be launching this on the first quarter of next year. So it's going to be a really interesting, because it's going to put the other systems around for the money. And uh, if you think, again, how can you contribute? So, this is what I do, but there's a lot of things in the pipeline that we think we're going to develop. So we are looking at water, sanitation, health. If everyone does a small piece of this, then these people could break from poverty. So it's not about 
Me, it's about them. So end of the day, if you are selflessly helping someone else, it helps develop and mold your character itself. And uh, if you want to know what we do more, we always uh, get volunteers to help us in the rural states of Peninsula and Sarawak. So you can follow us on Facebook, and also you can email us. Uh, that's about it. Thank you very much.